at, by not asking um, sexual orientation and gender identity uh, demographic questions, we are excluding a major group um, of minority students. I think one, you have to look at the message it sends when you don't ask those questions, which I think it kind of conveys the message that number one, either nothing outside of those predetermined boxes that you provide exists, which obviously isn't true or we wouldn't be here today, and two, that anything outside of those boxes just doesn't matter. We should just have that on. We've come so far, but we don't have that on our registration forms yet. We need these questions to be answered. We need these questions to be asked. Um, we've already had LGBTQ people in the closet for so long. You know, why, why would you want to keep them there? And, th and that's just a, another form of oppression. And that doesn't make your students feel very comfortable on campus. I wouldn't feel very comfortable. Um, if part of my identity wasn't recognized. And so it's to be able to know how marginalized groups of students are performing and to be able to know what services we need to be providing these groups. It can provide a better understanding of the community that's attending the college. It can gather data for, let's say, scholarships. Academic and creative programs for students. Clubs, speakers. Hopefully have a diversity center or a Q center or anything like close to that. Just knowing that the people care enough to ask those questions um, takes you kind of out of that heterocentric, you know, atmosphere that you get at schools that don't. I think it's awesome, you know, just the fact that um, the school, you know, cares about that part of me. There's an option even in the questionnaire that um, um, gives the student uh, a chance not to answer the question. We know that um, students thrive when they feel accepted and welcome, and you know, every school wants their students to thrive. And it will show that um, our population is on campus. Like, we're, we're here, we're walking around, we're, going, we're attending classes, and we should have the opportunities as other um, students on campus. You know, why, why would you not want to have that available? I think that if we ask students these questions, then um, we can see, you know, data that shows um, that we have maybe a higher uh, population of LGBT students than we originally thought. And you, you know, you don't realize that you even have a guard up until you're in a place where you can let your guard down. It's a building block for where we want to get. And so this is absolutely essential to a healthy, positive culture, um, campus culture, um, to ask. I think it's important um, because, for one, it's, it's data and it's a place to start. Um, I'm a nurse scientist and I believe I'm so I do research of my own, and I know the importance of having information such as this. I'm Noel Coley, and I'm gay. My name is Matthew Schrader. I'm an effeminate gay man. I'm Carrie Blomberg, and I am a bisexual female. My name is Steven Simpkins, and I identify as gay. My name is John Marotta. I'm a gay male. My name is Rebecca Hudson. I identify as a straight female. I'm LaVar Singleton. I attend Tacoma Community College. I identify as gay. And I go to South Puget Sound Community College. I'm alumnus of South Puget Sound Community College. I'm the ASB Senator for Diversity and Equity at South Puget Sound Community College. I attend Highline Community College. I attend Highline Community College. I was a former student of Highline Community College. We need it. <laughs>